Now that we're familiar with magnetization, or as it's also called the magnetic polarization density, we're ready to talk about relative permeability. And so up until this point, we've been assuming everything is happening in free space, so let's start there. So for free space, our magnetization, capital M, is going to be equal to zero. And so what that means is we know that the curl of our magnetic field intensity H is going to be equal to some current density. And so we can also write this as the curl of our magnetic flux density B divided by our permeability of free space mu naught. And so as I said before, that's going to be equal to some current density J. And so let's call that current density J sub F just to help distinguish it between when we add in our bound current density a little bit later. So this is going to be our free current volume density. And so free because it's in free space. Okay, so now let's consider the case of being in some material medium. So we're no longer in free space and we're now in some material. And so what that means is that our magnetization is no longer going to be equal to zero. So if we come back to this equation, we can say that we have the curl of our magnetic flux density B divided by our permeability mu naught of free space. And that's going to be equal to our J sub F current density for free space. But because we have some non-zero magnetization, we're also going to have some bound volume density, bound volume current density J sub B as well, as we saw in the previous video. So let's sort of expand those two current densities out. So as we stated above here, we know that that J sub F can also be set equal to the curl of H. So let's say J sub F is curl of H. And as we saw in the previous video, we could represent that J sub B as the curl of our magnetization M. So curl of capital M. And so from our properties of the cross product, we can write this as the curl of the quantity H plus M. And so now what we can do is we can compare the right and left sides of the equation. So we have the curl of something over here on our left side and the curl of something over here on the right side. And if those two are equal, then of course we can say that our B, our magnetic flux density, is going to be equal to, and I'm gonna move the mu naught to the other side, so mu naught times H plus M. And so this equation is going to be sort of the more general equation, and this is going to be true for all materials regardless of their linearity. So true for all materials. But let's get a little more specific, and let's say we're only considering linear materials. So for linear materials, what we're going to have is a relationship between our M and H. So we can say that our M is equal to chi sub M times H. And so again, you'll note that we're doing sort of a very similar process as we did when we talked about relative permittivity for our electric fields and our polarization. Okay, so we have this relationship between M and H. And so that chi sub M is just our magnetic susceptibility. So chi sub M is our magnetic susceptibility. Susceptibility. And this is going to be a dimensionless quantity. And basically it's just a measure of how sensitive the material is to a magnetic field. So let's just say briefly how sensitive is our material to the magnetic field. And remember our M and our H have the same units, so that means this has to be dimensionless. Okay, so what we can do then is we can combine these two previous equations. We can say that our magnetic flux density B is equal to mu naught, and now we have our H, which is one, plus our chi sub M times H. We can rewrite it like this, and then let's say this is more generally, let's sort of combine all of those terms out front of H and just say this is equal to mu times H. So now we have this relationship that B is equal to mu times H, where our mu is going to be equal to mu naught times our mu sub R. And so in doing that, we've defined that term in parentheses as our relative permeability, mu sub R. So our mu sub R is equal to one plus chi sub m, and we can also rearrange that and say that that's equal to our mu divided by mu naught. 
And so again, that is going to be our relative permeability of the material. So relative permeability of our material. And so this is also going to be a dimensionless unit or a dimensionless variable, I should say, or value is maybe even more appropriate. Um, so we have this dimensionless uh, relative permeability of the material. And again, that's very analogous to how we had a relative permeativity of a material. And so we're not gonna have time to look at an example of that, but if you do wanna get some practice using these equations, you can look at example 8.7, which is on page 375 in the textbook. And so of course the idea is that all of the all of the equations that we've looked at up to this point have been in free space. And the only thing that we need to do in order to change that from being to free space to being in a material is we need to take our mu naught, which is our permeability in free space, and just adjust that to the more general mu, which is equal to our relative permeability times our permeability of free space. 